quite looking forward to this. And it's all done by magnets, you know. See them underneath? It's great when we get the old theatre out. Must be a hundred years old if it's a day. And the magnets, still working nearly as good as new. They're very good at it, aren't they? Can't beat it. After that, there's only one thing we can do. The nice thing about this is that all we need to start is a couple of good magnets. See what it's made of, Syria? That's right, iron. There's something holding them apart. <laughs> no, I've tried hundreds of times. When the magnets are that way round, you'll never get them to stick together. But turn one of them the other way, and it's a different story. They stick like glue. Now try hanging one of them on a piece of string, Tom, and see what happens. Those ends will stick together. But turn one around, and suddenly they're enemies again, fighting to get away from each other. The ends of the magnets are called poles. You know, like the North Pole and the South Pole. And the first useful thing to remember about magnets is that a North Pole of a magnet will never stick to the North Pole of another. It's impossible. So obviously something really powerful is holding them apart. Let's have that piece of wood over here, Tom, and I'll show you how to do something really mysterious. Clear a space and keep things tidy. Good. Now, push those sticks in all round and make a little cage, nice and firmly. A cage just big enough to take your bar magnet. Make sure they're really in tight. Great. It should fit with a little room to spare. Now for the big moment. Put the other one on top. I remember the first time I saw that. Couldn't believe my eyes. It's floating all right. And from that, you can tell that the poles at each end of the top magnet are the same way around as the poles in the bottom magnet because they're fighting to stay away from each other. The same thing goes for the magnetic washers too. If you wanted them to stick together, you'd have to take the top one out and put it back the other way around. They'd stick like glue then. Magnetism works through air, you know. Spin the bar magnet and the little jelly mold gets pulled round with it. A magnetic roundabout. Ah, too close. I bet there's a paper clip glued to the back of the sun because that's what the magnet you're trying to keep out of sight is really pulling round. See what I mean, Tom? Magnetism. Yes, it's magnetism, all right. Magnetism works through solid things, too. You need 30 or 40 paper clips to make this experiment look good. Yes, that's about enough. I think that'll do. Into the jar with them. Just look how the magnetism passes right through the glass as if it weren't even there. Have you spotted something else too? Yeah. Now, will magnetism pass through water? 
One way to find out, build a boat. Piece of wood for the hull so it floats. Some drawing pins and a paper sail. Simple enough. Fix it together and let's see. You take a magnet. You? Yes, you have a magnetism does pass through water. The magnet is attracting the drawing pins through the water, so the boat just follows wherever the magnet goes. Funny how magnets don't stick to glass, isn't it? Yet they'll do anything to stick to the metal drawing pins. Now, there must be a good reason for that. And talking of boats, I've got something in my memory store somewhere. Now, let me see. Yes, here it is. Switch to replay. Magnets have been used as compasses for centuries. Without them, those early explorers would have had an even harder time. These early compasses were made from a rock called magnetite. You can still find it in some parts of the world. They used to call compasses like this lodestones, which really means leading stones, because that's exactly what happened. Lodestone compasses led those early sailors in the exact direction they wanted to go. Hmm, thought you might like to know that. Interesting little fact. Just hang your magnet on a piece of string again. When it stops moving, it'll be pointing somewhere. Exactly where, I wonder? Yes, north, south. That's right, Surya. North, south. But I suspect you could see Tom's compass over there, hmm? Well, let's have a look at it then, Tom. What a super compass. Oh, and a little one, too. Let's use the big one. Now, wait until it settles down. Compasses are sensitive things. Right. What does it tell you? One end points north, the other to the south. Just like the bar magnet on the string, see? Disc number 90, please. Pop it in, and we'll see why they both have to point in the same direction. Going over to replay. It's because the whole Earth is really one big magnet, with a North Pole and a South Pole. It has magnetic lines of force, and they behave like the lines of force in any magnet. Take a clean piece of paper and put it on top of your bar magnet, Leah, and sprinkle the iron filings on. See, the iron filings are clinging to the outline of the magnet. Now, spray it with a little hair lacquer to hold it all in place. You'll have to do it very carefully. There you are. The actual lines of the magnetic force of your magnet. That's enough. It's fixed now. You can pick it up. Lines of magnetic force, just like the Earth has them. The lines that make a compass point north and south. Oh, so you'd like to make a compass, eh? A needle stuck through a bit of cork. It's not working because the needle isn't a magnet. Ah, you've got another needle, Pierce. I will turn that needle into a magnet to make a compass. Now take the bar magnet and stroke the needle gently, right along one direction only. That's enough, I think. Now stick it through another cork, don't prick yourself, and float it on the water again. There you are, a magnetic needle pointing very accurately north and south. The same way as the compass. But of course, 
Because what have you made? Compass. You know, magnetism is a bit like chicken pox. It's catchy. The magnetism from a large magnet has somehow made all these nails magnetic. They're even all lined up in the same direction. Leah, try and pick them up one at a time. Ah, carefully does it. <laughs> oh gosh, they're coming and going. Yes, oh. It's all coming from your magnet at the top. The magnetism is being transferred from nail to nail all along the chain. Try and join up your magnets with a string of nails. A sort of magnetic necklace. It's very fiddly. just clinging to each other from North Pole to South Pole, from South Pole to North Pole, all the way across. Disc number 23, please. Now there's a dish of loose metal particles. When the magnet gets near them, see how they all line up in one direction? But when there's no magnet present, and you examine the particles under a microscope, what do you see? They're certainly not lined up here. They're jumbled up all over the place. Every one of those tiny particles is, in reality, a very weak magnet. Each particle has a north pole and a south pole, but they're so weak they're pointing in any old direction. But look what happens to metal particles when a large magnet passes near them. Immediately they all line up as smart as you like. And always in the direction of the large magnet's own magnetic field. Oh look, oh look at that, two nails. I've got two nails stuck together. Some of the tiny particles inside the nails are still lined up because they were near the large magnet. They're still magnetic. If you want to take the magnetism away, you've got to jumble up all the particles again. And the easiest way to do that is to heat them up. As it gets hotter and hotter, all the particles in the nails start jumping around until they're all higgledy-piggledy again and bang goes all the magnetism. No, it can't pick anything up now. I'm switching to replay. Have a look at this. Have you noticed anything about magnetic materials? They've all got iron in them somewhere. But what about these? Wood. No iron, no magnetism. Pottery and ceramics? No iron here, so no magnetism either. Now, aluminium isn't magnetic. Neither is any of this stuff, because there's no iron in them. But steel has iron in it, and apart from being magnetic, it does something else too. It conducts electricity. You see, magnetism and electricity are pretty closely related. To prove it, just connect the terminals of a battery to a piece of wire and watch what happens when the electric current passes near a compass. It's not pointing north now because the electricity in the wire is making quite a strong magnetic field of its own and the compass is trying to line up with it. You can make your own magnet using electricity. All you need is a big nail wrapped round with insulating tape. 
Coil some copper wire around it like this, nice and neatly. You'll need a battery, yes, of course. Nice. Ready? Right, Leah. You're in charge of the iron filings. Now get ready to connect the two ends of that copper wire to the battery. Connect it up. Now that old nail has become quite a powerful electromagnet. To turn it off, just undo the clip and the magnetic field made by the electric current disappears. It's as simple as switching a light on and off. Clip on again and the electromagnetism is back, quick as a flash. Sweep them all up, Leah. Did you know that there's an electromagnet in your front doorbell? See the copper wire coils? A bit neater than our old nail. And it rings because the electromagnet is being switched on and off very quickly. So the springy metal clapper is made to bounce back and forth and ring the bell. Clever, isn't it? Electromagnets are pretty useful things. They're used in cranes to pick up huge lumps of iron. You see, they're very controllable. Look how that steel ball just balances between the forces of an electromagnet and the pull of gravity. Here's a train that uses the same idea. The electromagnets pull the whole carriage up towards the metal track. But just like the ball bearing, it doesn't actually touch it. The train just floats in a carefully balanced magnetic field. It was built to test out the idea, and you'll never be able to buy a ticket for a ride on this one. Funny little thing, isn't it? But it certainly looks as if magnetism gives you a pretty smooth ride. All right then, show me your magnetic train. Nice bit of track, that. Yes, I see it doesn't float, but it does use magnets, that's for sure. The carriages are coupled together by magnets, aren't they? Do you think you could make those magnets actually power the train? Yes, Tom. Magnetic poles that are the same always push each other away. They repel each other. And that's just what it's doing now, all right. Put the magnets the other way round, a north pole touching a south pole, and a south touching a north, and the whole train sticks together. Doesn't it run nicely? What are you doing here? Oh, what a good idea. Using a magnet to sort things out. One pile for the things that are magnetic. Another pile for the rest, the bits that aren't magnetic. Great brains certainly think alike. Just watch this. Switching to replay. We're in Switzerland. The circle down there marks the place where deep underground, scientists are using magnets to sort out the particles of the stuff the universe is made of. 
Imagine those little balls are atoms and particles whizzing around in a very powerful magnetic field made by those circular magnets. They go faster and faster until they're going at nearly the speed of light. Now we're actually inside the underground circle. The particles are moving along that boxed-in tunnel down there. They're still on their way. That ball of red light shows the route they take. It's very tense in the control room during a big experiment. At exactly the right moment, the scientists will tell computers to adjust the magnetic field and sweep the particles, which no one can actually see yet, into the special place where the experiments will happen. At last, the particles have nearly finished their journey. More magnets sort them out and split them into groups so that measurements can be made. These are rare snapshots of some of the smallest things ever discovered in the entire universe. And without magnetism, we'd probably never even see they were there. They're like beautiful little shooting stars, aren't they? Ah, still sorting with your magnet, dear. Yes, pins and paper clips. They're magnetic. Into the magnetic pile. Glass. Definitely not magnetic. Plastic? No. Not much magnetism there. You know something? One of the reasons I'm even fonder now of magnets and magnetism is because I never see the kitchen so tidy.